listening to Overwatch League Daily, your daily source for Overwatch League news, scores, and more. Here's your host, Kicked Tripod. Good morning, Overwatch League fans, and welcome to Overwatch League Daily, your daily source for Overwatch League news, scores, and opinions. I am John Kick Tripod Horseman, and here's your Overwatch League Daily episode for December 9th, 2017. On today's show, the London Spitfire get a chance to redeem themselves, the Houston Outlaws get to see how they fare against Seoul, and I'm joined by Overwatch Pacific Championship caster and analyst Matt Pixie Carroll to break down last night's matches and take a look at the final day of the Overwatch League preseason. But first, the scoreboard. The London Spitfire put up a disappointing performance against the LA Gladiators on Thursday, while the San Francisco Shock surprised many as they defeated the Mayhem on Wednesday. Going into the first match, everyone wanted to know, was the London game a fluke, and can the Shock compete with a top-tier team? It didn't take long to answer that question. Birdring and the Spitfire decisively handled Baby Bay and the Shock, taking the series 4-0. to zero. Up next, we have the most anticipated match of the evening as the Houston Outlaws, who nearly lost to the Dallas Fuel through five games, take on the Seoul Dynasty, who 4 0 the Shanghai Dragons on Wednesday. While Houston looks strong on Horizon Lunar Colony and Nimbani, ultimately Fleta and Seoul prove to be too much and take the series 2-1 to one with one draw. Lastly, we saw the Shanghai Dragons, who previously lost to Seoul 4-0, go against Boston Uprising, who lost to NYXL 3-1. The match was a nail-biter of back-and-forth play, but ultimately Dream Casper and the Uprising would steal this one in a tiebreaker 3-2. To discuss these matches, I'm joined by Overwatch Pacific Championship commentator and analyst Matt Pixie Carroll to discuss the major points of the games last night. London didn't look great in their Overwatch League preseason debut and they lost to the Gladiators 2-3. However, in this match, they performed closer to what was expected. What changes did you see them make? This time around, London Spitfire had time to prepare. That's really what this felt like to me. Um, before they played Gladiators, they had not seen Gladiators play. Versus San Francisco Shock, they had actually not only been able to see them play, but actually been able to see them play twice, which is pretty great. They got to see... Uh, what worked for Shock when Shock were winning, as they did in their first match against Mayhem, and they also got to see where their weaknesses were and how they could be beaten, which is what LA Valiant did to them. So I feel like this is all just down to London Spitfire having that extra time to prepare. Baby Bay was largely credited for the Shock's strong performance in the first two games of the preseason, but he seemed to be mostly ineffective against the Spitfire. What do you think changed? Uh, what changed as far as Baby Bay goes? Again, I've got a feel that comes down to prep. Uh, but to be more specific about that, I feel like uh, the downfall that Mayhem had, in my opinion, was they were often trying to play what was working for Shock and what Shock were trying to set up for Baby Bay. Uh, they were just trying to do that themselves with Tavik, right? And instead of trying to counter the strategy, they just tried to do the strategy but better. Whereas... Uh, Spitfire, I feel, came into this countering the strategy very, very directly. And what we saw was a very good team shutting down Baby Bay very well. They basically made a bit of a gambit that they could shut down Baby Bay and Shock wouldn't really have a plan B, and they turned out to be correct in that assumption. Let's talk about Soul versus the Outlaws. The Outlaws put up a respectable fight, losing 1-2 to two and drawing on Numbani. What were the keys to Houston's performing so well? Um, the Houston Outlaws, they played to what I would call the Korean pace. I know that sounds really airy-fairy, but generally speaking, Korean teams reset after fights very quickly, uh, which makes them quite formidable. They often play what feels like quite a fast game. I would say all of the teams with predominantly Korean rosters have actually been playing a little bit slower right now than what they traditionally would when it's, you know, teams like... Uh, the fully formed Lunatic High or Runaway or GC Busan or, you know, whoever, um, they do play just that little bit faster. So I feel like there's they're a bit slower than they normally would be because a lot of these rosters are still a little bit more mix and match and they're still just kind of coming together. But 
Houston coming quite close to matching that pace is actually quite a good sign because what it means is even as Dynasty start ramping up and start getting faster, start returning to, again, that quote-unquote Korean pace, uh, by the time these teams like Dynasty and Spitfire have reached that pace again, teams like Houston Outlaws will themselves have been able to increase their pace. They'll basically be improving at the same rate rather than playing a game of catch-ups. That's actually quite a good sign, in my opinion. Uh, do I think we saw Seoul at their best? I would say no. Uh, partly because of what I said just before in terms of I don't think they are playing as fast as they could be, and when they play faster, they will be more threatening to any team that cannot keep up. Uh, but more importantly, again, to go in the specifics, I kind of want to look at Nambani because like, what we saw there was something very, very classic, and it's like there's this kind of age-old debate about this. So we saw their strength in their ability to hold on time bank, but we saw their weakness in letting it go to time bank in the first place. Now, pushing Nambani to a tie luckily for them, allowed them to take the series as a whole. But it was a situation where it was very threatened that it could go to a tiebreaker, where maybe they would not have won. It's hard to actually call that. Like, that's a little bit too conjectural to say anything much about, but what we saw was issues that put them in that position, but then the ability to perform under pressure. And the age-old debate I was mentioning is, like, what's more important? consistency or performing when it counts it's really hard to say but what you can say is when a team can perform when it counts if that team can then also become consistent the ability to go above and beyond when it counts ends up being an absolute x factor if that's something these guys preserve as their consistency improves then this is arguably that top three team everyone has been saying soul dynasty could be Next to the Uprising in Shanghai, these two teams both had really tough first matches. Now that they're up against teams on more even footing, what were the major themes you saw from the two teams that people should take away from the preseason? Uh, major themes from this match, um, I've kind of got to skive a little bit here because, yeah, my my dragon's prediction has come through. Come true. Sorry, what I was saying about them is is pretty much being correct in so far as how good or bad they look as a team is rel relative to how the other question mark teams like Mayhem or indeed in this case Boston Uprising perform. And losing to Boston Uprising I think has been extremely, extremely telling. Look, Shanghai Dragons is a team made up of players who have finished 5th and 6th place in tournaments like almost chronically. And it shows, unlike a team made up of first place finishes like Dynasty or like Spitfire or, you know, any other team that has that kind of talent, raw talent on its roster. And what we've really confirmed in this match is something we've suspected, but no one was really willing to say just yet for Shanghai Dragons. And that is that the whole is not greater than the sum of its parts, unfortunately. What is fair to say, though, is the DPS players do actually have some real potential. Another thing a lot of people had wondered about Shanghai Dragons was, hey, maybe each of the players on this team was only uh, getting bad results previously because they were getting held back by their team. As it turns out, yes, that is actually still true now for the two DPS players of the Shanghai Dragons. Unfortunately, the team holding them back is the rest of the Shanghai Dragons. That's not something they're going to shake. This is a bottom two finisher. Tonight we will see the final three games of the preseason. In the first match, we'll see the battle for Los Angeles as the Valiant take on the Gladiators at 11 a.m. Pacific. At 1 p.m. Pacific, we'll see the Mayhem take on Dallas. Lastly, and this is the match I'm looking forward to the most, we'll see the Soul Dynasty take on NYXL. Let's talk about Los Angeles first. What should people be looking out for during this match? Uh, yeah, coming into the LA versus LA match, well, I mean, straight out the gate, you've got a pretty sick rival match. I think that's totally fair to say. And I think what this is likely to determine is which of these two teams is the most likely to break top five. They've both, in my opinion, shown a bit of that potential. It's hard to find too much of a relative metric, but I think it is pretty fair to say that the Gladiators look a little bit better than Valiant coming into this one. The reason for that is simply because Gladiators beat Spitfire. Like, 
what more is there to say about that? Whereas by comparison, Valiant only barely beat Shock, who were then beaten very handily uh, by Spitfire. So you've got to give this one to Gladiators off the cuff. That being said, maybe Gladiators only beat Spitfire because they got the drop on them. And like I said earlier, Spitfire didn't have that time to study them and prepare in terms of match play. So maybe we get a completely different result altogether. But I stand by my prediction that the team that wins this specific matchup is the LA team that may break top five. The other one will not. Perhaps one of the most competitive matches of the entire week will be the Seoul Dynasty against the New York Excelsior. Do you think the XL can take the match from the Dynasty? If so, what do you think they need to do? Seoul Dynasty versus New York Excelsior. This is a tricky one. I've got to say I would give this to Dynasty just as kind of a gut feeling. What I think we have with New York Excelsior is a lot of ability. Uh, And... As I said before, I don't feel that Soul Dynasty have necessarily hit their ceiling. Uh, I feel like New York Excelsior still have to gel together a little bit more before they can really start thinking about what their ceiling is. But hey, look, maybe their ceiling is equally as high, if not higher, than Soul Dynasty's. So what you've got to say about this match is it is a match where Soul must play their A game, however high that may be so far. And that may just mean you put in the Lunatic higher roster or bust, right? The single map loss versus Boston Uprising was very telling for New York Excelsior, but everything they were struggling with is fixable. So on their side, it's going to show how well New York Excelsior can adapt and improve. Or indeed, if that's something they're going to struggle with, at least in the early stages of this tournament. So there's a real interesting thing thing going on between these two teams. I feel at the end of it, Regardless of result, what we will have seen is the quote-unquote real Salt Dynasty. Whether that is much better than they've been playing so far, whether that's not very much better than what they've played at so far, but ultimately, whoever wins this matchup, if it's Salt Dynasty because they played way better than they have so far, we're going to know a lot more about how Season 1 may look, because right now, skill floors mean more than skill ceilings. In Season 1 and beyond, skill ceilings will mean more than skill floors. The team between these two that starts hitting that ceiling better is going to go much, much further than the other. That's going to do it for Episode 9. My thanks to Pixie for joining me on the show this morning. Episode 10 will release tomorrow, December 10th, 2017, and will feature Overwatch caster and analyst Josh Sideshow Wilkinson. Remember, you can find the show on any of your favorite podcast outlets, including iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Podcast, and we're on YouTube, too. Click on the link in the show notes to find us. Want to stay in touch? Email me at overwatchleaguedaily at gmail.com, tweet me at OWL Daily Show, or join our Discord at discord.me slash OWL Daily Show. That's going to do it for Episode 9. We'll see you tomorrow for Episode 10. Yeah.